Okay. Are you ready for this one? Yeah, yeah. I know. Who has seen Blair before? Yes. Who has not seen Blair before? Are you in for a treat? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, Blair. Um, I just love Blair. Blair and Tabash both. They are two completely different personalities, different people, different. Um, and this is, um, you know, like, like, I'm trying to remember who it was. I think it was Annie. Was it you that said that about the channeling? Yeah. Uh, different types of channeling. Uh, Blair is a true, I mean, this is Blair leaves, Tabash comes in. Okay? If you've never seen something like that, you're in for a real experience. Okay? That's, he'll probably tell you a little bit more about it, but that's what Blair does. It's really different and it's really exciting. Okay? Um, and his story about it is all in his book, Don't Change the Channel. <laughs> It's really, it's really good. It's very, very good. It's all, it's a, it's his story. Okay, and he, and he's been brought back by popular demand. That's how good he is. All the way from New Zealand. Okay, he's a dear, dear friend of ours. Um, we've known him. We see, and I say it in present tense. If you notice, because mom is right here. Oh God, I can feel her really strong. Oh God, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and Gladys confirmed it. Gladys is, where is she? Yeah, she was here earlier. She'll be in here in a minute. Um, uh, yeah, mom's here. Yeah. Okay. Um, we met him. Gosh. She met him before I got to, and it was 2000. Um, I think 2002, 2000, yeah, and then I, yeah, and then I got to speak to him by phone, and then I got to meet him in person in 2007, and we've all been best buds ever since, you know, and just, it, he's just a, he's just a family friend, and just been with us ever since, so him, he and Tabash, so we're just all, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, you have friends like that, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's, he's just a dear, dear soul. So I'd like to bring in our love, Blair Styra. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's um, fantastic to be back here, and uh, Eureka Springs is the most extraordinary place. And I want to share something with you which is um, fascinating but slightly spooky as well. Um, one of the transformation conferences, I think it was about four years ago, uh, Julia, myself, and I think one of her sisters, we decided to drive here to Eureka Springs because we'd heard about this hotel called The Crescent and apparently it's a majorly haunted hotel. So I thought, I've got to go there, I've got to check this out. So we drove up here and uh, we went to the Crescent and the moment we walked into the um, foyer area, you could just feel the vibration, the energy was quite, quite amazing. So we wandered around and I had my camera with me, so I was just randomly taking photos and just seeing if I could pick up any energies, etc. So we listened to our feelings and we got directed to go down right to the basement area. And so there's this big beauty spa which was there. And apparently this area had been the morgue. So sort of a bit of a contradiction there. But to the right of me was, as you went up from the stairs, was this area which was the restroom. So I was sort of walking around and I was just getting a sense of you know, where to go. Anyway, so I was drawn towards the, the area where the restroom was. So I went into the men's room and there's this giant mirror on the wall. So I stood right at the end and I put the thought out to spirit, look, if there's any vibrations in here, I, I want to ask permission to take a picture. So I just click, 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 click. Anyway, 
camera in the bag, off we went. Got back to the hotel, downloaded onto my laptop, and there was this absolutely clear picture of a nun that was reflected in, in the mirror. Anyway, I got here on Sunday, and I had all Monday here, so I thought, I, I want to go back to the Crescent. I want to see you know, if I could pick up any other vibrations. So I went in there, didn't feel a thing. You know, it was just, didn't have the same experience, same vibration. But I thought, well, I'll wander around anyway. <clears throat> and I'm going to go downstairs again. So I went downstairs. And when I went to go to the area where I took the photo, there was a big wall there and a piece of furniture. And, and that area that I had been to before just basically didn't exist anymore. So I thought, oh, they must have done some renovations or something. So I went into the beauty spa area and I said, oh, have you put up a wall here and closed off this area? And they go, no, it's always been there. It's always been like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I didn't say it or anything. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, okay, I'm having a bit of a do-do-do moment here. <laughs> so, so I mentioned that to Julia. And, um, and of course, you were like, what? <laughs> So um, obviously we just sort of stepped into a sort of a parallel universe basically, you see. You know, and last night I had some dinner with friends and I was telling this story and, you know, and I was, we were thinking about how we create our reality. And, um, and I sort of made a joke thinking, well, I wonder why I needed to create the reality to go into a men's room to take a photo. <laughs> so, and, now, and now it's shut off to me. <laughs> so I'm not quite too sure what that means. <laughs> anyway. Um, Again, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, tabash is, Tabash, you know, as a, as a mate of mine said to me once, oh, Tabash is just a dude. And he's like that. He's just very practical and pragmatic and um, the sort of guy you want to go and have a beer with, basically. You know, and, 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 but he's insightful and he's loving and he's uh, got a perspective of everything from his God nature. And I've been channeling Tabash publicly for almost 26 years. Um, obviously, the journey of channeling Tabash has changed my life in every way possible. And I realize that whatever we do in our lives and in our experiences is actually our own personal journey into understanding ourselves. And so with the consistent ingestion of Tabash energy through my system all the time, it's obviously evolving me. And as Tabash says, you know, everything is God, we are all God. So in a great part of my day, I'm ingesting God through me on a more conscious level. So it sort of puts you into, um, I suppose I'll call it a, an altered, a permanent altered state sometimes. Enjoy his energy. Um, he's confronting, he's humorous, he's honest. Um, he just says it as he sees it basically. It doesn't take long to make the transition. Um, I just sit down, align myself with a specific thought that spirit gave me some years ago. Um, so I will shake a little bit. That's just the energy going through my body. And then Tabash starts coming in. So my body goes slightly rigid. And then he starts making a few adjustments and clearing the throat, that sort of thing. And then he's there and then he'll say hi and pretty much get on with the process. So um, enjoy his, his energy. Um, he has a propensity to jump into the audience, <laughs> walk around, talk to people, give them a few messages, that sort of thing. If he doesn't, then that's just his decision, but um, just to warn you, just in case he does. Um, and he's quite open and blunt. Um, he won't get overtly personal, I can assure you that. <clears throat> but. He does, and I'm just thinking about uh, last year's conference, where um, he just got everyone up dancing and, and doing stuff to some music, and he just pulled everyone in. You, it was quite extraordinary, the energy. So, Anyway, I will bring Mr. T through. Um, have an awesome time, and I'll talk to you all later on. Okay. It was much here. <clears throat>
Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. How's your body feeling since last time? Good. Because we sort of programmed you to realign your energies. And I've got to say to you that the physical shift that you've made has actually triggered off quite a different way of you thinking. And you've been putting it into practice, but you're still lazy. So you still need to remember how to do the driving because I still feel that you're trying too hard and it's not like you're fighting, but it's more like the old part of you is fighting the new part of you. And you've got this conflict of interest that's actually going on sometimes. So I just want to say, just, it's not exactly the word abandon yourself, but give up the old ways of thinking, give up the old pattern. And, and allow yourself to engage with what you really are. And remember, what you really are is just source, God, the highest vibration. And so you've already shown to yourself that you can do it. But as it's been said, even your best intentions are going to be challenged at times. Because the moment you get involved more in your God nature, the more it's going to challenge your human nature. And it's the human nature that you're needing to make peace with. You don't need to make peace with your God nature. You're already that. So why do you need to make peace with something that is inherently you? But when you make peace with the human nature in you, then this is where you allow yourself to start engaging in a very different relationship with source vibration. If you can imagine the God consciousness, like a great big disk out in space. And that energy is forever pulsating all the time. And it's its own creation. It's its own life force. And as it does so, then of course the energy keeps expanding all the time. And so this is what it's meant when it says you are made in the image of God. So you are doing exactly the same thing. So every cell of your physical body is like that too. And it's continually moving in and out, in and out. It's own God energy. It carries all the source vibration that is necessary for you to be God consciously through your bodies in any moment that you wish. And so, when you get too caught up into your human nature, it's not that you are stopping the God nature from being there, but it's a bit like you put up a sign and it says, shop's closed. <laughs> and so the God energy comes and, oh, this shop's been closed for ages. You know, I wanted to go in there and get something. So it'll just go off and find some other energy. So what you want to do is you want to have the sign that says, open for business. <laughs> Where your mind and your body and your spirit is forever consolidating together and it's business as usual, and the biggest business that's possible, which of course is your alignment with that God energy. With all the major transition that is occurring everywhere with everything, there's this letting go of what I will define as the old lifelines. And the old lifelines have served their purpose. Why they've served their purpose is because they were attachments that you had to source, which was allowing you to be fed from source in a specific way that was based on your particular ways of human thinking. So obviously in the past, when humans were very much involved in their human nature, even though you were being fed by source, the sort of information that you were actually receiving, the feelings that you were experiencing, etc., were, were different. And, and so, after a while, as you all evolve through all your life's experiences, then, for want of a better phrase, the pipes need changing. 
And so, so the old lifelines, it's like old cables that, that, that you know, aren't going to feed the right frequency anymore because your frequencies are so much more powerful. And so you need new lifelines, you need new cables that are going to be able to deal with the sort of energy that you're actually attracting towards you. Now, in this process, of course, it's a gradual, natural process. And it's not necessarily a process that you have to go and create a seminar around because one is in a consistent state of renewal all of the time. And it's that renewal that everyone is involved in at this particular point. Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, on all levels, you're renewing all the sources. So in that renewal, you're able to now achieve the ideas and the experiences that you want to set up for yourself. But you have to be very alert and very aware to the way you're choosing to direct that energy at this particular point. And so that's where everybody has to be even more aware of what's the best deal that I want to make for myself at this particular point. And as so many of you discover, when you go to look at those deals, then you come up against a lot of your human nature at times. That's why, as I said to you, you know, it's like, yeah, we can do some healing on you, but, you know, you still got to get out there and do more and be more and create more, basically. Because it's about the way that you are informing you about your new vibration, your new energy. But then, when you align yourself with new frequencies, there is a, what I'll call a form of training that you actually have to experience. So every aspect of yourself is presently training to understand how to work with this energy, feel this energy, how to think from this particular place, how to act from this particular place. And so as you get senses of what this is to you personally, what you are also doing is that you start to isolate certain areas of yourself which you realize, oh, that's not serving me. And, and if it doesn't serve you, then that's definitely not going to allow you to open up to any energy possibilities that you so desire in your mind, in your body, in your spirit. And so, hence the necessity for you to inform who you are to yourself. When you give new information to yourself through the way you think, through the way you feel, through the way you live, through the way you participate, and that information is aligned to source, then it's going to be very easy for you to become clear in the way that you want to live your life. And if you don't, well then, life just beats you up. And, and, and it's interesting saying that, because I find it exasperating, amusing, amazing and sad that humans still accept that they like to beat themselves up. It's like they accept, well, that's a natural part of the process. But of course, it's not. It's just there. And, and so, remember, you've got decisions to make about what you want to think, what you want to feel, what you want to do, what way you want to use what you've got access to. And it's not something you have to find. It's something that's here. It's something that's you. And, and, and so what you do is that you naturally look at what you're drawn to. What lifelines are you drawn to that's going to lift up your idea about yourself. And as you lift up your idea about yourself, it's those ideas that are going to make the difference. It's not what you do. It's not what you gather. It's what the ideas are. It's what am I going to do with the energy that I've actually assimilated. So spending these last few days here, and for those who are doing the UFO conference, you're involved in an opportunity to experience yourself on different levels. And you're gathering, and you're sharing, and you're experiencing yourself on all different levels. And as you experience whatever you do, you're also questioning yourself. You're pretty much consciously and subconsciously putting to yourself, who am I? 
Not what do I need to become, who am I? And when you stand in a place where you like the answer when you say, who am I? Well, then that automatically aligns you with source in a greater way. And then that gives you more confidence, more courage, the ability to take the steps that you actually want to. How can you become something before you know where you're standing? And, and so you have to remember that it's who you are now that takes you to the next port of call of you. Because you're always going to be looking for more and more aspects of yourself all of the time. And so the natural vibration of source energy and its increase is amplifying the power of opportunity in every way possible. But you're the souls who have to direct that energy you're the souls who have to make the decision about what way that vibration is going to actually work for you. And collectively, you're the souls who are making the decision about what's going to happen to life. So it's not just about yourselves as individuals. It's not just about what happens in your hometown. You're all making decisions about what's happening to the world. I found it very interesting with all of this terrorism thing that's going on in the world at this point. When they had the bombings in France a few months back, and we're watching all of this very closely because, and I have mean no disrespect to anyone who's lost their lives, but it's an opportunity for humanity to decide what are we all about as a collective energy? What are we actually doing together? And so one can feel the abhorrence of such acts. And it's that feeling that's triggering off in people a decision. And that decision is enough is enough. I don't want this. I want harmony. I want peace. You know, because suddenly it's, it's infiltrating like a virus through the world, whereas in the past it's been more contained. And when things are more contained, it's very easy when you're not in the place where it's going on to think, well, that's not happening to me. That's over there. And, and so I'm safe and secure in my town and my life and my job and so on and so forth. But suddenly you've got this energy that's spreading its vibrations right through the world in a very subtle way. And suddenly everyone's realizing it could happen anywhere. It could happen, you know, in a street in New York. It can happen in a cafe in Sydney. It can happen in an airport. It can happen anywhere in the world. What's happening? What's happening to us? We're creating an opportunity to decide how to pull together, how to collectively make a decision that we don't have to put up with this, that we're not going to allow ourselves to you know, have to go through this. We don't have to be afraid. We've got to be creators. And, and I find it interesting that you know, the governments of your world, it's like a wake-up call to them too. So for those who haven't been associating with each other, suddenly there's a lot more cooperation. There's a lot more awareness of pulling together of what are we going to do about this? This isn't just a problem over there. This is everywhere. When you get events that affect everyone everywhere, <coughs> then again it's reminded to you that you are a collective vibration of many, many, many lifelines and you have to be more aware of your individual thoughts and vibrations so that you could literally have an effect on the consequences of what's actually happening. Whether it's to do with the politics of the world itself or the spirituality. And each of you possesses the power to change all of this. And each of you, in your own fashion, has a responsibility to make a decision. 
one of the things I've been teaching my clients when they come to see me is to think or to say if they wish this one little thing. In my life, I live in a world where there's no such thing as terrorism. Or in my life, I live in a world where there's no such thing as conflict. In my life, I live in a world where all beings know they are God. In my life, I live in a world where all beings know how to live as God. So knowing it is one thing, living it is another thing. So if you think about what I've just said, every day of your life, you could just make that decision. And you're making a big difference. But then you could expand upon this. Personally, well in my life, I live in a world where I'm always healthy. I live in a world where my relationships are always in harmony. I live in a world where I feed from source and I know what to do with it. So you could just go on and on. And so when you're deciding how you want to be in your life, then you are taking responsibility. And this is what is happening. You are deciding in my life, how do I want to live? How do I want to feel? How do I want to think? How do I want to be? You're making everything your responsibility. And I mean everything. There cannot be any more degrees of separation. It's the degrees of separation that have created the difficulties within the human structure and within all the structures of humanity. And when you have the understanding that there is no degree of separation, then this is where you make your own decision about how to pull together. So what you're doing as individuals is you're pulling yourself together. So remember, as a soul, you are everywhere. So you've been paying far too much attention to certain windows of yourself and not paying attention to other aspects of yourself that are important. Now, as the barriers are being broken down by natural evolution of humanity, then suddenly you're being exposed to all these other selves that have always been there. And they're getting your attention. And they get your attention by your new insights or ideas or feelings or things you're drawn to, or things you start paying attention to. And the moment you start doing that, what you end up doing is establishing within yourself a great magnet within yourself. Because what you've basically done is you've just woken up the God nature in you. And as that God nature has woken up in you, then you start emitting certain frequencies. And those certain frequencies align you with the new lifelines, as I said. And in these lifelines is, as I said, information that you need. But not just information, but this is where as Michael is discovering, you align yourself with these masters and these energies and these vibrations and these teachers and these harmonies and, and all these other sources that are basically his saying, hey, we're here. We heard you, we heard you call. And, and, and but, you know, it's not about them. Look, you know, here's the book, read it. It's like, we're here. Here's the vibration. Now, what do you want? What do you need? And so, don't just say, well, what would you like to tell me? Or what do you think we need to know? You know what you need to know. That's why you're changing. So that's where you get personal about it. Well, in my life, this is how I want to feel. This is how I want to be. This is the way I want to be aligned. And, and, and you've got to be honest about it. You've got to be upfront about it. You've got to be clear about it. This is not a time to waffle around, as they say. This is a time to get very defined in who you are, what you are, but also how you live that. You've got to live in a very defined way. So you, you, you can't evolve if you don't change what's going on around you. Otherwise, it would be like you know, living in a town that's been bombed and never rebuilding it. You just keep living in it and putting up with it, and adapting to all the rubble that's going on around you. And I see people do this. They make changes in themselves, but then they still live in the rubble of their old emotions, or their old relationships, or their attitudes, or their ideas, or whatever like that. 
So it's like, oh, what's that? Oh, that was just that, was just that old relationship I had. You know, so kick. you give it a little bit of a boot now and then, you see, and it's like, oh God, that keeps sticking to my shoe. <laughs> and so, so you sort of feel that, you know how when you get a gum on your shoe and it's like something sort of sticking to you. Or you create sort of irritants in your system, which are basically indicators to you that something still has to change. And, and, and it's amazing what people will put up with, you know, like, you know, how long can you keep that shoe, a stone in your shoe? And you think, no, no, I'll deal with it, and, and I'll just wait till it shifts over to the left, you see. And then you walk for a while, and then it sort of finds itself in the worst place possible. And then at some point, you have to sit down, and you know, it might be the most undignified thing that you could possibly do. But you have to sit there and hoik your skirt up or your trousers and take the shoe off and shake that stone out, you see. And then it's like, oh, thank God. And so and then you get on with it. And, you know, in a way, that's what you have to do in life sometimes. Sometimes some of the things you have to do are quite undignified. Some of the things you have to do are quite raw. But you can carry on walking with that stone in your shoe. And it's amazing how you're going to adapt to it. Until eventually you won't even notice it anymore, but it's still there. And then at some point it might rise itself because an infection might be created or something. And then this is where humans then force themselves to face themselves in a sense, you see. So, if you're going to be infected with anything, wouldn't you rather be infected with source energy, with the greatest power possible, with all the greatest lifelines that are available to you? And as you pull those lifelines in, remember, those lifelines already recognize your value, your worth. They recognize your God nature. And, and as they align themselves with you, and you feel the alignment happens, and this is where a simple process of recognition occurs, and you just... No. And suddenly an idea is there, or the clarity is there. Or you feel that confidence and that courage and that step needs to be taken. And so, and this is very much what everyone is involved in at this particular point. If you don't do it, that's okay too. Because you'll just keep on doing it until you do it differently. But then how long are you going to put up with stuff that is not necessary? So you've got this freedom that's being created but you've also got a unique position based entirely on your vibration. And just recently I've been doing a little bit of a teaching on the idea that everybody creates their own reality. And I've been sharing this with some people. And you do. Everything, every event, every feeling, every idea, every person, this room, Adnan, the camera, the table, everything. It's only existing because that's what you wanted to be real. So you could participate in whatever way you wanted to have that experience. No one else has created it in the same way that you have, ever and never will. And you know there's only one answer to why anyone creates any reality. It's so you could decide how to respond. That's it. So you make the decision. How am I going to respond to that? That feeling, adnan, whatever. And, and so, but your ways of responding are based entirely on your ideas about yourself, of your ideas about your life, about your experiences, etc. So if you carry with you ideas that are always aligned to source, and therefore knowing that your God nature is complementary to your human nature, well then you are going to make sure that whatever reality you create, it's the best one for you. And as you do that, then you lift your vibrations up and you start aligning yourself with other individuals who are doing the same. And that enhances you because you've got a kindred energy. And then another energy does the same. And so collectively, you feel fed, you feel aligned, but you're also realizing this is the way of serving consciousness. I don't have to go out there and become something. I just have to live what I am. And as I vibrate to that particular frequency, align myself with the ultimate lifeline. Therefore, I will align myself to other people's lifelines. But they're only lifelines that are only me anyway. So I'm only attracting myself to myself. 
And as I pull more and more and more of that in, and again, this is where it gets down to there's no such thing as a degree of separation, then you realize that I don't have separate ideas. I don't have separate feelings. I just am. I don't need an identity. I just am. When you get to a place like that, then what happens is you start to discover the unique qualities that each of you possess as individuals. And these unique qualities, you've made a decision to have those. And these are your talents. And these are the abilities you have to raise energy, to express something. And these qualities could be your spirituality, it could be your musical talents, your writing, it could be your ability to heal, it could be your ability as an as a attorney. But whatever it is, you've got these unique qualities and these unique qualities are recognized better when you stand on the platform of your alignment. And when you stand on your platform of alignment, then what you do is you recognize what's authentic to you. And this is where people awaken to, oh, I've got this passion for something. And obviously, you know, this isn't necessarily something that you're going to discover right at the early part of your life. Some people discover this in their 30s and 40s and 60s and 80s. And whenever you discover it, you've created that opportunity to do so. That's when you needed to do that. That's when that situation happened. And, and so, think of this. What you're doing is you're opening up the world to yourself in lots and lots of different ways. You're opening up a world within the world, within the world, within the world. And imagine it's like the earth and there's a big door. And you open up that door and you walk in, oh, there's another earth. And then you open up that door and there's another earth. And so on and so forth. And it will always be like that. And it's the same for yourselves as individuals. As you open up who you are now, then what do you do? You see another part of you. And then you start to look at how you relate to that particular part of you. And that particular part of you has already aligned itself up with what your needs are, what your ideas are, what your feelings are, what your possibilities are. And so now, as you get to a certain point, you realize that there's no more doors to open. There's just a place where there's no doors. It just is. And so you begin to experience life without the identity, without the labels, without the needs, without the purposes. And when you get into that place, then again, those lifelines from God's power just suddenly get stronger and more powerful for you. And then your own personal energy does the same, so it expands out like that. And as it expands, <clears throat> you throw out your own energies. And those energies reach out for God's power, therefore pulling more of that vibration in, which allows you more of expansion. And so on, it just goes on. Expand, and of course, every cell of your body is doing the same thing. And therefore, that's going to have an amazing effect on the organs of your body, on, on your emotional state, on every aspect of yourself. And then, of course, you connect up in, with other people in the same way. You just that pulsing and flowing, gathering and pulling in all of the time. But through this process, what you're also doing is you're looking at how the vibration can fit in with the qualities that you actually possess. And this is when you become inspired because you've aligned with a specific frequency that relates to the, the gifts you have, the abilities you have, whatever it is. And so what's important is when you're doing a specific task, it's about spending a few seconds aligning yourself with the source energy before you do that. So that therefore what you've done is you simply called in that part of you to be open. So if you're writers, right, just before I start doing this, I'm going to call into that part of me, spend a few moments. If I'm a healer, same thing. You know, whatever the situation is, it's about preparation. And saying that word is important too. Because you're all in this high state of preparation for more, you've got to look towards not what your blocks are, but more where your resistance is. 
and, and the resistance, usually from my perspective, comes from a level of uncertainty. And remember, you know everything. So, so you're not really uncertain about a thing. And so again, it's about, right, well, let's just go to the part of me that is everything, that knows everything. And as I use that vibration, then this is where I'm going to be a more uh, alert to what I can actually access. I think I'll hop down. <clears throat> How can you use your qualities more, please? Be more open to stuff. Hmm? You've always had the feeling inside of you, but you've always put yourself in that little paddock. And so I see you sort of sitting on the edge of the looking over the fence, going, oh yeah, I, I could do that, I could feel that, but then you let your fear get in the way. Or you just allow yourself to think, oh well, sometimes it's just laziness. Yeah. And which is fine, but, but what's happened, of course, is that you've opened the gate and you've walked out. And, and so you're in the field of life now, basically. So no, this is not only a great gathering time for you, but this is also a time where you're facing yourself. And, and that higher part of you is saying, right, you've got to change this and look at this and think this differently and all that sort of stuff. Because you can. And I really honor your compassion. So you have an enormous heart energy, your ability to love. But then sometimes, oh, at times I've watched you not like yourself very much. And when that happens, what happens to you? Well, it's like you've got to call the plumber in then, you know, and mm -hmm. get, get, get that pipe all cleared out, so to speak, you see. When she gets into a misery gut stuff, how does that affect you? Directly. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and when he gets affected by that, how does that affect you? Yeah, and then it's like pistols at dawn. So, so okay, what can you do to encourage her to, to, to be more? To let her, let her do, let her hmm? uh, proceed hmm. to, to try to learn more. How do you stop her? By accept maybe, maybe not accepting mm. exactly, story. yeah, exactly, or accepting that. Oh well, she's just doing her thing, and that's what she. I don't want to bother her too much, all that sort of stuff. But remember, you're all serving each other, and you've got a good harmony together here. And it's interesting because sometimes I see it's like you're on your bridge and you're on your bridge, but you seem to be going the opposite direction sometimes. You see, and you'll catch up. But this is a time to think. Now, hang on a minute. Um, we've decided to be gods together. We decided to look at developing ourselves together, mind, body, spirit. So, so you've got a bigger journey. And, and it's not just about being a woman and just being a man. It's like, hey, we decided to be gods together. So, so let's start looking at how can we live our lives in that way? How can we make our lives better by consciously bringing this in? Now remember, you know, when it comes to all this soul stuff, it's actually really about life. So, so again, you know, it's not like, well, let's put time aside to do great meditations and all that sort of stuff. You're busy people. You've got things to do. You know, but what you can do is you can think, well, how can we take what we believe and just weave that into our lives. So that therefore, that becomes our development. We're living the vibration, you see. And as you live the vibration, and you find that you create moments where you can do things like this and other situations, you see. But, you know, it's not feasible to think that you have to be going to transformation conferences every week. You know, you, 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 you have to, you know, you've got to pay the bills. You know, there's washing to put through, you know, and all that sort of stuff but you can still be God doing it. So how can you be God more in a day-to-day -day existence? Listen more. Hmm? And not just listen, how can you practice it? By doing. Hmm? And what will you do? Mm. Now don't say that, that's one thing you will not do, is say I do not know. I'm not sure that. And don't say I'm not sure, you're God. Find something right now. I'll give it to you, I will remember I'm God. And I will remember I have choice. What sort of reality? Remember, she's your reality. So what sort of reality do you want her to be now? Confident. Confident? Good. Come on. Um, I don't free. Free. Good. Um, more strong in the belief that she can yep. do. Yes, yep. So if he's decided that in his reality, that's how you are, well, I'm sorry, you just have to be that now. <laughs> <laughs>
And in your reality, you could say, well, I'll create the reality that I accept that. And, and so you see, this is self-development. It's not just the development of your spirituality. It is the development of how you understand how to use life, how to direct the energy, how to put it through your day-to-day -day experiences rather than wait until you go and pray or meditate or, or do seminars or whatever. You've got to allow yourself to recognize it's a day-to-day -day experience. So when I'm aligned with God day by day, and I'm practicing it day by day in whatever way I can, well then I know that I'm always aligned and I'm always making a difference. Not just to myself, but to everything as well. And, and so it has to become a way of living and not something that you separate in any way whatsoever. Just looking at your energies, because since last time you've gone, your, your, your aura has gone way, way out there. You've been doing some good work. What does that feel like for you? I can breathe. You can breathe, yeah. Yeah, yeah think about the congestion that was there before and all that emotional stuff that you were sort of dragging around with you like that. And so, of course, your heart energy was, was, was just so out of sync, basically, you see. But I do notice that you're still making a lot of adjustments in that part of your system, and that's why everything feels a bit odd. And, and so, so you're having funny feelings in, in that part of your energies. Don't worry about it. It's actually just the, the realignment. I mean, think about that. When you hold yourself in such a way for such a long time, and suddenly you're relieved of that, then, of course, your system has to get used to not carrying that vibration anymore. It's a bit like going, well, what have you done? You know? Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so you're finding a, what we'll call it, a new equilibrium. So, so, so as you find that new equilibrium, which, you know, just to make a, a, a point about that, that, that's happening a lot on a collective level because a lot of people are experiencing that sort of feeling. And, and of course, what's going on is your soul is, is it's learning how to live and in a sense of expanded consciousness is actually learning how to adapt to these different vibrations and frequencies. And it's a magnetic thing. So, of course, your physical system is used to vibrating in a much denser frequency. So, so the, the feeling has to be given to you very gradually. And so one's going to sort of feel it, like, like a sort of a vertigo feeling, in a sense. And, and after a while, that, that, that passes as your physical system, and as, as your physiological system, accustoms itself to that new frequency. But there's always going to be more. And, of course, with the acceleration of vibration on this planet and within the planet and what's going on around the planet, then there's quite a lot of that at this particular point. And, and, and so that's why people are also feeling, uh, uh, how can I put it, um, it's like a slight heaviness sometimes. But it's not a heaviness that's a negative thing. But they're a lot more aware of the density of the human nature at times. And, and so, so it's again showing you the uh, diversity between your lighter energies, your lighter bodies, and, and, and the lower energies, the heavier bodies that you've been experiencing. And, and so, so it's that real, uh, what's a phrase you can say, uh, turning point. So as you go through that turning point, it's like, oh, I've got one foot in that door and one foot in the other door. But, but you're all moving forward. But, but it's still all about allowing yourself to realize what way do I need to be more responsible for the road that I'm on at this particular point. And of course for yourself. Um, and I, I honor you too because I, I'm noting the uh, encouragement that you're giving to other people. And, and, and that's making a difference too. So you're giving a lot of nice little seeds of life that you're actually sowing there. But um, one of the guides just said something there. But there are times where you'll, you'll get caught up into what was. And, and why do you do that? When you know better. There's no, there's no answer to that. It, it, it's just that's that old habit. And, and so, so when you get into that old habit, well then that old habit is certainly going to open you up, not open you up to those other energy possibilities, basically, see. So, so again, I want you to work on this, but it's a strong year for you. And, and you've turned the volume up on your natural sense of authority. So you need to use that vibration more. Practice makes perfect. And okay, you don't have to, you know, become a till of the hun or something. So, so, you know, you just need to just be aware that, wow, you know, look at the ground I've covered. And look where I'm standing. This is a powerful place. And so I'm going to do something with this power, but I'm going to do something for myself. Because you're making it about yourself. So, hey, well done you, actually. Could you please give her an applause? <laughs> Hello.
Hello. Hi. Nice to see you again. <clears throat> I'm going to challenge you right now. Can you stand up? I want you to turn and look at this. She's this beautiful lady who's just got, I've talked to her today, and she's really, really shy. <laughs> her name is Randy, and she likes to stay in the background and observe. She's a wonderful soul, and all, I'm going to count to three, and I want you all to say, at the count of three, Randy, we recognize you. One, two, three. Randy, we recognize you. <laughs> Randy, we love you. Randy, we love you. We are your friends. We are your friends. We're going to talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all right? Yes. Good. Give us a hug. <laughs> Now, you see, you can't be in the shadows anymore. <laughs> I wouldn't have done that to you if you couldn't have coped. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it if I couldn't have coped. <laughs> Everybody is in their little zones. And I think the thing about communicating like this is that you all got to get together. You got to say hello to each other. You got to hang out with each other. You know, I still see people in their little packages and their little areas and that sort of thing. And, and you sort of forget that there's some people who want to be a part of things, but they're a bit afraid. And, and, and so, but what's to be afraid of? Because you're all each other. You know, everybody here is, is each other. This mass of beautiful love, this mass of consciousness, this big family of life. And so it's so important to participate in ways that you feel you can. So, you know, you find your own comfort zones. But I still find it quite interesting, you know, when people go to things like this, how people can still ignore each other. And, and, and but they're not doing it on purpose. It's just, oh, well, I'm just respecting their space and all that sort of stuff, you see. And, and yet, you know, sometimes it's just to know if you see someone sitting down at lunch alone, oh, can I join you? And if they say, no, bag off, well, then you don't. <laughs> but if they look at you and have a smile on their face, oh, thank you. you know, oh, I am Randy, and I'm the life of the party. Come and sit down. <laughs> so it's about, you know, exploring all the possibilities of serving each other, of loving each other, of creating opportunities for each other. Because on a planet which is housing so many billions of you, it's sort of hard to ignore each other. So, so it's about, well, we're all here, but what aspects of myself do I need to pay attention to? And this is, again, very, very important. Which of the lifelines do I feel really, really important for me? How's your joints? <laughs> Not so good. <laughs> I uh, was asking for help with that yesterday, mm, last night. Yeah. Did you think you get it? A little bit. Yeah, so it's little good. Bit. It's good. Yeah. Do you believe in you? Yes. Hmm? Do you live in your belief of you? I'm starting, I'm becoming more alive. I'm starting to connect to that. You know, in a past life you had polio and you couldn't walk. In another lifetime, someone beat you so badly that all the joints of your knees were just destroyed. And so you had to drag yourself around on your arms and your hands and could not walk. And what you're doing is that you're carrying all the fear in all your joints. It's like this part of you that says, I'm not good, so I've got to lock myself up and make things difficult for myself. So what you've got to do is you've got to think of yourself with ease, not with dis-ease. And I know your intentions are to do what you want to do, but you rather make it hard on yourself, don't you? And you create these little hurdles that you have to leap, and in your late state, you can't leap anywhere. 
and then you have to get assistance. I all of a sudden started feeling really afraid that I didn't know why, I don't know why. Mm. So I'm asking for help with yeah. that. Do you know what the fear is? I'm afraid of falling. No, you're not. You're breaking through what was. That's what your fear is. So you're actually at the edge of the old stuff and you're about to take a step of faith into the new energy. And that step of faith into the new energy, of course, is making you freak out because you think, oh, bleep, I don't know, you know, will I be able to do this? And, or, am I qualified? And, and will it actually work? And all that sort of stuff. Well, that's entirely up to you. So, what do you want to say as God to your joints, please? I love you. Good. Say thank you, too. Thank you. Good. You're a wonderful soul. People love you lots. Yeah. But you've got to allow yourself to realize that I've got to respect myself more and give you that respect. So you don't have to beat up on yourself anymore. And again, don't try hard. Remember, decide what reality that you wish to create. Okay. And then every day in my life, say this, in my life, in my life I, live in a world I live in a world where I'm full of health and well-being. Where I am full of health and well-being. Always. Always. So be it. So be it. It's good. How did that feel? Thank you. Oh, give me a hug. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. My pleasure. Bless you. Just get some water. Hang on. Where is it? <clears throat> How are we going for time, Julia? Okay. <clears throat> I have to go to Michael. <laughs> My brother. Hmm. Are you ready to take a big step of faith? Oh yeah, always. Yeah. Uh, pretty big year for you, this, because all the energies that are working for you are just going to go blah, blasting you with more information. And so you're going to find um, a lot more power flowing through your system. But what I need you to do is to make sure that you feel quite grounded. And, and um, there's going to be quite a few, oh, looks like dietary adjustments that your energies are making. So just, just be conscious of that. Um, the shoulder, too, needs to be careful. <clears throat> Just a little bit of stuff going on there, basically, you see. Yep, yep. And I notice how it's um, had some impact on the alignment of your spine. So, so you just got to keep doing your stretches that you're doing. All right, that's going to help quite a bit. Um, I feel there's about 12, <clears throat> four new master energies that are stepping in. And, and uh, they're going to accelerate the process of the writing, but they're also talking about the music. And so, so you've got to look at doing stuff like this, basically, because you're just going to be channeling more and more of this energy through you all of the time. So we're around, so I'll, I'll be sort of giving you a reminder here and there. But um, you might have the feeling sometimes where you just want to step away from everything. And, and when you get that feeling, my advice to you is to step towards it. So this isn't the time to have a sabbatical from anything. Because it's like, well, I created the ocean, now let's go and swim in it. And, and so, but at your pace, at your pace. All right? Okay. Good, 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 good. Okay. <laughs> the consequences of aligning yourself to all these different lifelines is quite extraordinary. Because, of course, what it does, it permits a resonance on a level that you've never experienced before, atomically. So, so everything just simply expands. And, and, you know, people talk about leaps of faith. I, I like to call them steps of faith. And when you take a step of faith, it's such much easier just to take a step, rather than feeling that you've got to leap somewhere. You take a step and you realize that you're working with an energy that's on your terms and that there doesn't have to be an enormous amount of effort that you put into anything. And this is the thing that I like to stress more than ever before, that you do not need to put so much effort into energies, you see. You help a lot of people. 
<laughs> you got a great power about you. You got to have a bit more faith in yourself, though. So faith comes by deciding the idea of it, doesn't it? So for you, I want you to say, in my life, in my life, I always have faith. I always have faith in who I am. In who I am. Good. Now go and live it, for goodness' <laughs> sake. But you're in a nice, balanced place. You're in a good, even space. But it's funny. You seem to do a lot alone. And, and so sometimes it's good to do more sharing, okay? And I know you like to be an observer, and I know you like to think, and I know you like to find solutions to things and all that sort of stuff. And that's just indicative of your personality. But sometimes it's like, hey, let's just go and participate and, and just enjoy without thinking, oh, I wonder what that was all about. You know, sometimes what it was all about was just simply the experience or what you felt. Why do you need to have knowledge all the time? Why not just think, well, the knowledge is the experience, or the laughter, or that love, or that feeling, or invite Randy to dinner. <laughs> Your calendar is going to be full, girl, for the rest of the year. <laughs> when you make it easy, it becomes easier. By gathering too often, it's like you're amassing too much information. And it's like anything, if you have too much information, you, you only need what's necessary. And I think this is very, very important when it comes to what lifelines you're drawing in. Only draw in what you believe is necessary, what you know you need. You know, you're not gonna miss out on a thing. There seems to be this great sense of urgency you know, so I better grab as many lifelines as possible. We're just going to get tangled up. But also, too, if you bring in a lifeline that doesn't resonate to who you are, then it's going to confuse you because you don't feel, well, I don't relate to that. So well, why not just bring in what you relate to? And as you do so, you know, it's like, as I said, imagine that line there is the step of faith. So I'm standing here, and I'm about to take a step into another energy. But all I need to know is what's here. I don't need to know what's over there, because I'm not over there. That's where I was, and I dealt with what I needed to. This is where I am now, and that's what I need to deal with. And what that is, oh, that's the place where I'm going to take the next step from. And then I take that step, and then that's what I deal with in. And of course, gradually, you get a sense of each step you take, there's more. Because you've allowed yourself to utilize the energy of that step and what its needs are and what way you needed it, etc. And so, but if you amass too much frequency, then it just, as I said, makes you confused, makes you tired, makes you doubt. And this is where people get into, oh, I don't understand any of this, or how will I ever get there? And, and then you get into doubts and anxiety and fear and worry, and then you have to come and see me, and we get it sorted, and you know how it works. And, and so, so this is where you've got to be alert to the fact that I only need to have the light in the room on in the room I'm in. And, and I don't have to have all the lights in the whole house, for goodness sake. So in the room I'm in, that's where I put the light. And then I can see everything that's in that room. And when I go into the next room, I'll flick that light off and then go into that room. And okay, obviously, if you're going to be using some rooms, then you just keep the lights on. <laughs> and, and so it's about making sure that you only illuminate in the way that's actually necessary. Because remember, you're, always, you're God already. So, so therefore, the, that, that power is just going to be there. So you're not going to have this big power bill at the end of the month if you keep all the lights on. So, so what you do is you're your own power source. So within that sense of that power, right, this is where I'm standing. And from this point, what seems the most important lifelines that are necessary for me to use at this particular point? I have to come over to this lady here. <clears throat> How's your mother? My mother? Yeah. My mother's fine. It's 
good. Well, what way can you serve her at this point, do you think? Be there more. Mm. Yeah, yeah. She just seems a bit alone at the moment. She's dealing with my boss. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Think, think, think of this, though. So. It's like she's sort of standing on this platform with all this responsibility mm. and all this pressure on her energies. And it's making her feel really hmm, um, unsupported. And it's not that she is unsupported. But sometimes it would be nice for some to someone to say to her, Hey, Mom, how is this for you? And, and what can we do for you? And you know what she's like, Oh, no, don't worry about me. And, and so, so what you say, No, Mom, come on. You know, you're coping with this. And you've got to know, you've got to have a bit of step away from this sometimes. And don't forget about yourself and the process. And so, so I think you need to tell her that, actually. Because she's getting so exhausted. And, and through this whole process, and quite distressed within herself as well, basically. See, and of course, her father's just getting grumpy. And, and so, <laughs> understandably so. But, but um, so it's not about, here's the plan, Mom. But it's more, hey, you know, don't forget about you. What about you? But also, what I'd like to, to ask her is, Mom, when you look at what you're going through with Dad, what's this all about for you? What do you think this is teaching you? What, what's it making you feel? What, what way are you doing the driving? And, and because she's quite a soul person, but she's not really sort of living it. So, so this is where you can encourage her into that sense. I'm just thinking of a book she could read. Are you familiar with Greg Braden? Yes. There's a book called The Spontaneous Healing of Belief. Get your mother to read it. And then I'll ring her and see how she goes. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Good, good. Right? Time to go. <clears throat> oh, happy gets. Thank you. It's been amazing. Please, please think of the collective energy that you're involved in right now as a lifeline of its own. So, so for the rest of the time you're here, just think about all yourselves in this beautiful river of energy this lifeline of energy that you're all participating in. And make sure you say hello to Randy before you go. <laughs> I told you I was going to challenge you. <laughs> Nothing like the present. Thank you. Much love. Blessings. Thank you, Julia. You're doing well. Good, good, good. Right, I'll bring Blair back. Howdy. <laughs> How was <is> your session? <laughs> I never know what to say when I come back. <laughs> I mean, how would you feel? Everyone's sitting there going like... <laughs> like this. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> I just feel a bit self-conscious, that's all. Tobias would always have something to say. <laughs> so, well, I hope you had a good time and um, just go out there and just love each other. And it's just, as I said earlier, it's just... I just love coming here, you know, it's been so many times at the conference now, it's just meeting up with so many familiar people and you get to sort of make friends with people and hang out with people and stuff, so no, that's great. So thank you and have a good night. Okay, thank you. Bye -bye.